Happy Friday, everybody. Yeah. April 28th, 2023. Welcome to the Weird Things program. It's like that. It be like that. It really it do be like that sometimes. The rent be like that. The rent is too high. Too damn high. It be too high. Hello, everybody. We're going to do the Weird Things program in just a few minutes. This is our show about doing science and space and goblins mm -hmm. and trolls and snakes. In that order. In that exact order. In descending font. <laughs> Thank you for joining us here, folks. Uh, how's your Friday going, everybody? Man. Fun Friday? Uh, yeah, woke up. Mm -hmm. Got a little got a little workout in. Streamed. Ooh. Went through my email. Haven't been through my email in a minute. Um, I uh, made a little list. Oh, we got that list. Hey, uh, a, hey how many times did you check it? More like a lot, like five or six times. Oh, not like I'm not trying to infringe. Oh, okay, I'm not trying to status jack. <laughs> not trying to gimmick infringe. Uh, no, yeah, I, uh, uh, we're kind of moving out of a bunch of things that were very pressing, mm -hmm. and now I can kind of address my life that I've been putting on pause. Yeah, for the last, uh, especially the last few weeks, but uh, uh, certainly for the last few months. So, boy, there's something about it. You know, when we were working on Founders Day, or when we've had multiple periods like that, where it's just, hey, it's just like three days of just like nonstop. Go go stuff. go. Um, and yeah, you do kind of have to like readjust your perspective on that. You know, you can't. You have to get out of that like um, fight or flight response. Yes. You've got to just get into a new headspace. Think Things are not it. on yeah. fire anymore. Stop doing hand to mouth. Start uh start start planning your uh, get ahead. Start yeah. planning your planning your time. And that's should we get should we get rock and rolling? Yeah, I think we should. Um, we're short of a Brian today. Maybe he'll show up mid show. Hi, Andrew. Hello. Hello, hello. Um, okay. Well, you guys want to do some weird thing? Let's go. Okay. Uh, then, Andrew, I'll count you in for the Weird Things program in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things podcast. I'm Andrew Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. And the other firm, mm -hmm. sturdy leg to this tripod, Sturgid. Bryce Castillo. Just the firmest. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So, uh, gentlemen, how are you doing? Oh, man, living the dream, mm -hmm. living the dream. You know, maybe Brian isn't here because he's looking at the viability of sending uh, two pies to Northern <laughs> California. Because my friend, that sound you hear is not an old clock. It is indeed the time ticking away on Andrew Maine's bet. It appears that Starship made a good go of it, but there was an unscheduled rapid disassembly uh, uh, in, in, in the middle of the sky. That's how rocket science goes. But for you, Andrew Maine, you doubled down and now it looks as if you've come up on the short end of the stick. What say you? Did, I, if I recall, Bryce, didn't you offer to take the pies to the face? I think I offered to take the nothing. If you managed to eke out of the, the, the nothing part of the double or nothing, I would take the pie so that we could have content. Okay. Well, as you know, because you guys decided not to have a show last week, the whole bet's null and void. Oh, oh what? What? Oh, no. 
pie, continue pie. to I will I will make my donation. <laughs> <laughs> I like that nobody cares about the thousand dollar donation. No, no that's pie, fine. Please. The orphans will will make do. We need internet humiliation. No. Uh, <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, it seems like you got one remember. last chance, possibly. There's two more days. It's two more days. <laughs> it's, you know, if he can fix the hole and you know the launch pad and get another thing out on there for the next 48 hours, uh, mm. who will be eating pie then? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, is there anybody uh, in Boca Chica, Texas, uh, listed on Yelp for rapid launch pad repair? lemon pot 24 so, 24 hour launch pad <laughs> repair guaranteed so uh yes i will be making good on that uh a promise is a promise i guess uh <laughs> but focusing on the launch it was interesting because spacex biggest concern was hey we want to launch this we don't want to destroy what they call stage zero which is the launch pad yeah and mm -hmm. There was a big crater carved out when you launched the world's most powerful rocket. Apparently, it is also the world's most powerful ditch digger. Yeah. And it carved out a good chunk of concrete and everything else underneath there. Oh, my made God. Some problems. So, right. Yeah, that's a crater. Uh, but to be to be honest with you, the biggest fear was the, an explosion taking out the tower and all of that and, yeah. and everything else. There, This was not an optimum outcome for the launch pad, but it was not their worst case scenario. In fact, this, this Starship and booster that they launched was actually one that they have, they, the next one, and remember SpaceX is building, they have a factory producing these things sequentially. This one was one that they were like, kind of like, well, we've already improved it. The next one has a lot more improvements and that's ready to go. Uh, we can just dismantle this. And they're like, yeah, we could just launch it. And so they decided, they made the decision to launch it, even though they knew they already had improvements on this. And this was sort of kind of a bit outdated, which just shows you the SpaceX process. Yeah. And for a, uh, it was a really good, you know, I think for them experience to see like, yeah, maybe we need a flame trench or maybe we need to do more to sort of cool things down. They had diverters. There are other things they could do. Of course, cost is everything. So um, they're going to, you know, Basically, I think iterate quickly. It wouldn't surprise me if we see something again in the next few months. Um, but uh, uh, I feel confident about that. But I don't, I don't think we're, we should do triple or down. <laughs> no, uh, we're not allowing. I'm, the, I'm, I'm, I'm the content <laughs> sheriff, and I'm, I'm finally <laughs> stepping in and saying we have to pay this off. <laughs> that would be the lamest if it was a triple game down. On this, Justin, what was your skin on the game on this? Uh, I'm the people's the people's champion okay. that makes sure that they get payoff <laughs> to the bits that are set up. That's right. I'm not going to get snookered here. <laughs> oh, no. All right. All right. There's going to be no snookering going on, going on. This is going down. You're going to get two pies to the face and you're going to pay. I don't know what, what it, it Brian's a hundred, a thousand dollars. Yeah. A thousand dollars to a charity. And I'm sure it'll be a great charity. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, being the only one that's optimistic and roots for space, this is the price <laughs> I have to pay. It is, it is, it is. And we thank you for your service. Uh, uh, so, so right now, the next timetable then on this will be in in the next few months. Then we're we're not looking at anything in the in the immediate uh, like like you know May range, are we? I would be surprised because that that they got to fix that giant hole in the ground. Yeah. Granted, it's a hole; it's not the biggest thing, but I think that that also means diverter. But I would be I do not think we'll get anything up in May. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that for them, remember. Uh, by all accounts, you know, the, the largest rocket ever made took off. They, they got a lot. We've seen the upper stage do its, you know, the starship stop. We've seen that kind of do its, its descent. And it was, I think, you know, the, the, I still don't know if we know, I think the problem may very well have been, I think what it was is if you go watch the flight thing in the corner, because they've got like, I don't know, 31 engines on it. They yeah. actually show you a diagram and you can see in the corner as these engines start to fail. Mm. And if you go back and you watch when it takes off, you see all this debris blast back up in there. And like, even at takeoff, you can see there's two engines that are out that are next to each other. There's a center engine that went out. And so it seems very likely that what happened was that it just blew debris back up in there. People are saying that the dust clouds went miles away and some like neighborhoods have been covered in, in grit. Yeah. So it 
clearly put several tons of rock into the air they didn't intend to. But yeah, if you just watch the ascent of the thing and look at that left diagram, yeah, it starts see, off with uh, three three of the boosters out or three of the engines. Yeah, if you scroll ahead, you'll start to see a little while more. Um, so after about a yeah. minute, it looks like a fourth and a fifth. There's one another one. Out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. After about two minutes, there's a set, about six of them out. Uh, some of them coming back oh. online after after that second minute or that so. That could but... just be yeah, sensor data, but yeah. So the fact that two went out right next to each other could suggest it was damage that hit both of them. Yeah. But any event, uh, it looks like it. What it was was yeah, it's, it's too damn powerful. It's yeah, too damn powerful. And that's you know they're literally in uncharted waters, right? This is this yeah. is how you uh, this is how you find out. Uh, I've, I've got a question. Maybe maybe you do or don't know about this, but I saw scuttlebutt about a. A, f a fire diverter, a flame diverter, um, so, some some sort of design, uh, some launch pad design yeah. that maybe could alleviate this issue in the future. Yeah. Well, so what that is, if you look at like the way uh, the other rockets take off, like if you go look at like the uh, the SLS or whatever, they put it up on top of this platform and it's high up, and then you can have basically imagine just like a wedge that just sort of takes that thrust and throws it sideways. Yeah. Okay. And so that's what it is. You take this wedge, you start flooding it with water, if you you know, to cool it down. But then, if you look at the the launch platform itself, you'll see. If you look at like, a, if you want to look for like a big broader image of this, because sometimes you'll just see that just the side, the smoke going sideways. Uh, yeah. And, um, we're we're trying to find that here, but um, but I I, I just saw, I saw shuttle, chatter you can about see it with the shuttle too. Yeah, if you look at like shuttle takeoff, you'll see it. Um, so, but, but yeah, that that's one of the things is that cost. That was why they 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 thought that hey, we can get away with this, and then they're like, oh yeah. Uh, Doctor Chiron says even SLS had some damage to the pad, but that was minor. Doctor Chiron, what do you want to guess the over under us on whose whose damage will be the most expensive? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they, 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 the 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 SLS doesn't do anything uh, cheap. First class, first class for the SLS. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. You see down below the. You see on the on the lower left of the left side image. You see that smoke coming out sideways. Yeah. And then what you're looking at below. So. Yeah. Um. Because I, I there was also that footage of um, the folks who were allowed to put their unmanned cameras in in that danger zone with that uh that minivan that that got was our, was they were gonna destroy that van anyway. Um. Whew, a lot of smoke. Hey, it's uh, uh, it definitely seems yeah. like a uh, natural disaster taking off, and less like a rocket launch. Um, oh yeah, I mean, you look at the si you look at the size of that hole, and you have to imagine every ounce of that got launched or vaporized into smaller particles and sent somewhere. Yeah, just pulverized. Yeah, that's wild. Uh, you can see the tanks. You see those tanks there. Those got dented by. Debris? debris that hit them wow jeez i how, how do you how would you make this is is the response to make this all more resilient to make this stuff out of steel and unobtainium or to make this stuff more disposable no, it's it literally 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 what it is is you've got you've got your launch pad here yeah. you've got your rocket here and all that pressure just going to hitting just hitting that surface right yeah if you put a wedge like a diverter it goes has somewhere to go. All it did was to, it just kept hitting there and going straight out, and just hit that, and then it just heated up, and then it just started to pulverize and expand and get thrown everywhere. So if you put, let's say, like a wedge shape underneath there, okay, so the flames would hit that and then go somewhere else, go sideways. They go further out and they can dissipate over time. You could put that in there, put more water in, etc. So, but it's also it's a very helpful sort of example to see. You know, when this thing goes to the moon, you know, or when it goes to Mars and it takes off from there, what do they need to do about a launch pad? Yeah. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. There's a flame diverter. Yeah. Yeah. I guess uh, what do you do about it when you need to go to Mars and... Well, well, well first, remember, first, thing, first know what you're going to do on Earth, I would imagine, <laughs> uh, uh, and then uh, uh, adjust for Mars. <laughs> well, remember, both Mars and moon have much less gravity. You know, so the moon, you're like, you know, one sixteenth, you know, Mars and one third gravity. So you're, there's not going to be as much thrust. It'll be the upper stage that's taking off from there. There's, I think, for 
I think for the Mars thing, I think they're talking about like having like thrusters that are kind of an upper level ring or something like that. So yeah. uh, I think that they're going to uh, basically, you know, again, take this into account. Sure. Yeah. It's a, uh, uh, it's, it's interesting. I guess it, it's, it's all these little things you don't expect out of, out of, out of a launch um, pro- progress evolution, right? Yeah. The engines get bigger and so numerous that, it just destroys the concrete or it, the, you know, it, any number of things like it, it's the scale of it is, is so big that we're seeing new wrinkles and that's interesting. Yeah. And a, th- and a thing to think about too, is that, is that once you solve a technical challenge, we forget that that was ever a challenge. You know, an example, like if you take a look at your iPhone and you look at the touch display, hmm. these touch displays are amazing, right? I mean, they're so sensitive. You can, you can draw with your finger and whatnot. Yeah. Multi-touch. And- you know, in my, in my adult lifetime, that wasn't the case is capacitance, you know, interfaces and particularly the idea that you could touch a screen and have it be that precise. Yeah. Wasn't a technology. And now it's of course, it's obviously, of course you can draw with your finger and you can do this sort of stuff with this. One of the things that people were kept talking about was 31 engines firing simultaneously. That never happened before. And, you know, the Russians had their biggest rocket they ever tried building had, approximately that the uh the n1 or whatever had like like that almost that many rocket engines and that was to light that thing literally was a nightmare they had to use this toxic fuels where the guys had to wear you know flame proof suits and respirators anything else like this and they had to like light these put these little canisters in there it was terrifying and this is just such a dramatically improved thing that nobody's like you know after falcon heavy took off with 27 engines now it's like, you know, 31, whatever, like, yeah, of course, it's a dump. you can do it. And it's like, wait, no, nobody ever did that before. That was never done before. And now SpaceX, Falcon Heavy has taken off multiple times. And here they got those engines to fire until they got hit by their own like, debris. But yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> if it, they were too good, too good at getting them to fire. Yeah. They fired too much. <laughs> um. So yeah, it, I guess it'll be uh, in the time frame of months before we see uh, another test of I, I think, Starship. Yeah, we, we we should probably keep an eye on just those infrastructure repairs, and and as as that happens, that'll probably be the guide, right? There, there. Uh, 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 Doctor Karen points out Raptor, which is the engine that powers the Starship or the booster, is much more powerful than the Merlin. Absolutely, it is substantially. If you compare the size to them. It's not just that like there's 31 of them versus 27 of them. Yeah. These things are ginormous. SpaceX says twice the thrust uh, the Raptor engines have over the Merlin engine. Damn. Um, wow. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. That's a lot of hooch. Uh, so, so there we go. A colorful lesson, but a lesson nonetheless. And consequences mm. for all well, our... I'll, I'll give you one more thing. Bet. Boeing Starliner. Uh-huh. Boeing Starliner was is the spacecraft to carry U.S. astronauts into space. Remember, there was a competition who would get up there first. Yep, Crew mm-hmm. Dragon or Boeing Starliner, <laughs> and mm-hmm. now Crew Dragon has uh, made a bazillion trips back and forth to the space station, and Starliner has yet to carry human passengers. Wow, really? I didn't realize that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, still, still nobody there. And so the question, people, the first question was, oh. Which is going to happen first, uh, Dra- Crew Dragon or Starliner going to the ISS? And people are like, ah, oh, Boeing's got a history of this, whatever, it's going to be Starliner. And then, well, it turned out it was Crew Dragon. Yeah. Then it was like, okay, what's going to happen first? Uh, we see you know, an upper stage starship take off and land or Starliner. <laughs> and then we saw the upper stage of starship take off and land. And then now the question has been, oh, are we going to see a, you know, a full flight of Starship before Starliner? Mm, maybe. Yeah, I wonder. Um, does yeah. Boeing tend to do, I, I guess that with, with SpaceX, there's, uh, I get the sense as an outsider that like, oh, they're kind of doing this out in public, right? Like they're kind of owning the mistakes. They're owning the uh, sudden <laughs> depressurizations. Um, but they're, but we are seeing them take those steps, you know, week after week, month after month, whatever, where, you know, we don't really follow the, we don't see Boeing news. We don't, you know, like you mentioned, there's not been a major update with Starliner. Is that a secrecy thing? Is that a culture thing or is Boeing? No, it, it's just not as, it doesn't get as much attention. So what happens with Starliner is that they do tests and the tests are public and NASA monitors them. 
and I, I think I'm correct on this, like the problem they had before was like the first time they did a success a test, not all the space, the parachutes deployed, oh, shoot. but it landed safely. And like, they're like, oh, that's fine. It's like, NASA's like, are you sure that's good? And sure then, about that? Still, <laughs> you sure yeah, about like, like, well, people, people would have been fine. Like, we need a higher metric than that. Yeah. And so, you know, dealing with the challenges of, of that. Yeah. So there have been out there. Uh, there is a uh, Tesla has a better marketing team. Wrong company. And uh, I, I, I think the fact that Crew Dragon is taking people to the space station and Starliner is not is kind of the best marketing you could ask for. But yeah, here's uh, here's the question that's being asked: Is will Boeing's Four point three billion dollars Starliner ever get astronauts to space. Remember, Boeing Ooh. had more money. Yeah, yeah. So friendly Billy. And, and let's be clear: I don't think this is anything to do with the engineering talent of Boeing sure. at all. It, it is. It is an organizational structure. It's a management structure. It is just a way that they're de they're designed. Um, so it is. It is. It, every time we knock stuff like that, well, I want to be very clear. And, and like you know, we've had a number of like small some other space company startups that have just failed. And, and I don't think it was for lack of brilliant people there. It's just can be engineering. It can be structure. It can be a lot of things. And so, yeah. I mean, not, Hey, this uh, stuff is extraordinarily hard. It's very complicated. It's very costly. Obviously money is not a problem for Boeing, nor is their ability to pay for and retain talent. Mm -hmm. uh, but also well, it's well, actually money is in a sense because SpaceX can go out and say, Hey, to their investors, we're, we want to raise ten billion dollars. You know, we're going to give you this many shares on this much valuation, and it's going to be high risk. You know, we may not succeed, and they can offer really cool returns. Boeing doesn't have that sort of leverage. You know, yeah, Boeing mm -hmm. is like the predictable government contract stuff. They're probably going to lose money on Starliner. I think they are. They're, this is a thing that's lose. They're losing money on, but if they run away from it. Nobody will ever trust them again with a contract. So, yeah, it's all sunk. I uh, mean, it's it's kind of the yeah. sunk cost sunk cost fallacy, but also like it's been an investment in all of these projects. It's not it it's going to be tough to. Uh, yeah, well, because yeah, yeah, they're, the government they're 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 going to have a really difficult time getting other other government contracts if they if they know that the reputations they're going to spend the money and fail and never do anything. So yeah, uh, but meanwhile too, like although it was it was a lot Starling. easier back when you know there was all this press attention that would like make a lot of these things where they would spend a bunch of money and fail and not deliver what they were going to, uh, you know, normally those things could be quiet, you know, just be, you know, a little, a little, uh, a recrimination at a DC, uh, cocktail party. And now it's international news and, yeah. and people are yeah. dedicated to covering exactly the, like by the day, here's how long it took before this, uh, uh, this thing happened, you know, in, in the past, you could just say, uh, we're working on it diligently. Yeah. But now people are like using drones and getting footage of test facilities and things like it's people really want to follow this. Yeah. Two, two things to think about. One is, uh, lift off the book by Eric Berger about SpaceX is really worth reading because one of the things you see in there is, the efforts by Boeing and other people, other companies and people within the government to stop SpaceX, to prevent SpaceX from succeeding for a variety of reasons, sometimes because they just look like kind of high risk cowboys. Sometimes it was corruption. Sometimes it was just protecting their own backyard, whatever. Had they succeeded and SpaceX was not here today, the total we would be in a very strong we would have no way to get astronauts to the International Space Station other than. Going to the Russians, which I don't know if you've heard, is a things, little bit things of a aren't issue. things aren't great. Yeah, not great, yeah, Bob. Would They're busy over there. Our 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 he our heavy lift capabilities would be extremely limited. There's just it would just be we would be the the advantage SpaceX has given us for a space etc. is insane. It is really you know it, it really can't be understated you know overstated rather of how much different geopolitically things would look, how much military defense would look like, all that if SpaceX did not exist. And it's a you know, careful th you know, thing to think about. And it, it's, uh, anyhow, um, mm. very, very interesting situation. Like now, and I, it's like, I, I'm glad to pay for Starlink, you know, me yeah. and, you know, Space Force. Yeah. 
Well, here's what you can pay for, dear listener. What? Us. Oh. Buy a oh. piece of our soul. Patreon.com slash weird things. <laughs> That's where you can support this very show. It's where you can get our after things program before anybody gets our after things program. You get your own custom RSS feed and you get a little bit of self-satisfaction. Let your you know, th don't do it for us. Don't do it for me. Do it for you. Do it for you. That listen. you, l you listen to this and you want to make sure that it keeps going. You. Please head on over there right now. Patreon.com slash weird things. Oh. <laughs> well, there has been quite a lot going on in the world of generative AI lately. Mm -hmm. Indeed. People, people love it. They put it on Snapchat. Snapchat got an AI thing now. Snapchat Diz. Uh, yeah. What well, have you been following like the image generation stuff and like video uh style, et cetera? I don't know if you've seen like the new uh Gen 1 from Runway. I did see this. Did you see this? Uh no. So you know, we've talked before about like, especially Brian's talked about like, hey, what if you just typed in a thing? And it would make like a video for you, or it would ch edit a video for you. That is basically what this runway does to a very specific degree, right, Andrew? Yeah, the Gen One, what it does is you give it a video input, and then you tell it what style to output. And so, think will transfer for images, and it's now applied to video. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to pull up the uh, the, the. So this is runway that uh, that are have made this model? Question mark. Um, uh, and and now they're promoting their Gen Two next version of this. Oh yeah. Um, but the idea is you just um, you, you you type in a thing and it generates it for you. I saw an app on the iPhone. I don't know if it was the same thing, but it was it was similar in that you had to shoot. You could, it was only five seconds. It would only work for up to five seconds of video, and you'd have to send it off for their their servers to to do the processing. Um, but um, I, I'm I'm interested in this because this is going to be the next thing of just type type in a thing and now we'll generate video like we would generate uh, images. Oh damn! So wow, we're, uh, yeah. we're looking at a video. That, that, here. Yeah, the, a video of a car seemingly in like a flat desert plain, but the uh, point of view is swirling all around it. Um, yeah, that's that's a uh, uh, pretty pretty amazing. Uh, just in terms of, I guess, really the big question is is exactly, you know, what what prompts are you using to uh, to 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 get there? But there's no doubt that the the stuff that is cooking is amazing. Like it is, it is truly, truly remarkable, and 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 accessible. That's the other thing is that it, it is it is so accessible. You know, I was talking about this on Daily Tech News Show the other day that one of the things that really to me is the mark of a lot of these AI uh, advancements being worth it and, and demonstrating how special everything is, is that it immediately makes a lot of other stuff look very stupid immediately in the way that like <laughs> the iPhone, the second that Steve Jobs flicked his finger up and showed that kind of touch interface, the phone you had looked dumb. Like it was just like, oh, that's that's a okay, cool. It's obsolescence. It's, it, it, it's, it's changed. Obsolete. It's changed forever. I've seen it yeah. once. I touched it once. Now everything else is dumb. And uh, uh, you know, oh no, no, it wasn't on DTNS. It was on the bones yesterday. Oh yeah. That like, you know, now, Chat GPT is so good. I find myself being extraordinarily frustrated with all of my voice assistants. Oh, really? Like I, it is like, this is the dumbest DOS. Like, uh, uh, like if you don't type it exactly the right way, it doesn't work, uh, a solution. Whereas it's like, I, I just cannot wait for all these things to get updated immediately. Yeah. Immediately. I need them to be updated because it's, it's, it's accessible. It's easy to use, right? Type a prompt, get a thing. And all of these systems are getting better. And also, it's like I know the, that once it, once I'm able to just talk to it, it'll be even better, yeah. right? There's no, there's no reason why that that I mean, it is a voice assistant. We've seen applications of it becoming a voice assistant, and it's insanely capable. And the just the the actual execution, the rendering of these things will only get better. 
I, I oh, think that's yeah. the most exciting thing is that this is probably the worst this technology is going to be uh, for the rest of our life. This stuff will get better, easier, faster, quicker, uh, cheaper, freer, um, more permissible socially will be more understood and, and will be less boundary breaking or, or line crossing um, than it is today. I mean, this is, I, I, stop me if I'm being starry eyed, but this is, all of this stuff is so exciting. It it really feels like uh, a huge, a huge time in history. Everything is going to get a chat interface built into it. Yeah. And sometimes, no, they're not, it needs it. And sometimes it'll be a dumb chat. That will be the thing you're going to see in some cases will be like, uh, you know, sometimes people are going to shove that into uh, devices and not use a really good back end. Sometimes they'll use a good one. Sometimes it'll be, it'll be silly, but expect every, I, I now get upset when I just can't use, you know, chat GPT and something because I can see how much it can control. Yeah. And, um, did we did opening I announced um uh we talked about plugins and I think we hmm. talked about um code interpreter. I and what yeah, makes those I things have really my access to plugins. <laughs> uh there's another member of this show. Oh. I will uh not name oh, him. Oh yeah. Uh uh, but uh he was very upset because he did not have access. And so I used open table uh uh to book a lovely mediterranean uh lunch for two for me and bryce that's right it was delicious i got my tzatziki sauce <laughs> <laughs> and uh the other person yeah. who doesn't have the plug-in access i don't know what he did uh, yeah i don't, I don't know, know what he's who up knows? to who knows <laughs> in fact we were we were speculating about this on the on that bonus episode because the apps a adding apps to chat gpt feels like the feels like such a major increase in functionality that if you had something like Siri, which has had all these years of building app integrations, even if the voice recognition, the command recognition is not great, has a system to do similar things, to interface with apps, third-party apps, that yeah. could, if Apple ever does it, could blow the doors open on, a, on an AI sort of thing like this. I mean, look. They, yeah, the challenge, they're going to. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, no, you actually know what you're talking about. I'm just <laughs> filling time. Eh, debatable. Yeah, I say, yeah, Apple <laughs> Apple deals with the challenge. Like, there was an article that came out about kind of, like, frustrations within the Siri team and whatnot about things. And they were very early on in that space, same as uh, Amazon. And the challenge is, is they've built these devices and these infrastructure that are kind of really 15-year-old technology. Yeah, if you really look at the state of the yeah. art on that, it's fifteen-year-old technology, and not that they don't have the capability to catch up, which I expect they will, but it's just it is a lot more inertia, and a lot of it's there's teams and stuff that were working on some stuff, but it's like okay, everything you did now, and that that's been, you know, there's been this sort of thing that like in the NLP research, natural language processing that uh, with that like chat GPT and all this sort of stuff just kind of destroyed that, which isn't really true. There's still a lot of really interesting cases, but there's a lot of, uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll actually, if I could screen share if, or. Yeah. Here on, uh, um, I'll, I'll just, yeah, let me show you. This was sort of a fun, I was working on a little fun project and I want to give you an idea of how fast you can iterate with this stuff now. Sure. Um, let's see if I can show this to you all um clean this up. no worries take your time um i don't think i can share oh here we go uh, so i oh, there we was go. playing around with uh a while ago you know i got into the whole idea of like building ignore my embarrassment my 20 years out of date list of apps of sites at the top. Uh, I was playing around with a while ago, the idea of, you know, speed reading, right. And working on like a speed yeah. reading app and improving it and doing something that was, you know, that chunked and whatever. And I came up with a simple sort of algorithm a while ago, because I read some studies from like the seventies that talked about how there's rapid serial visualization is where you present one word at a time, right? And you can do that in like your Kindle, like a Kindle Fire device is you can go into a mode. It won't do it on the, the e-ink one because it just would work with display, but the Kindle Fire, you can flash one word at a time and read really fast, right? Yeah. 
But research shows that chunking is actually more efficient, like grouping a couple more words together. So a while ago, you know, like last year or whatever, I got bored and I started working on an algorithm to kind of do that, to do the chunking and built an application to do it. Hmm. And I spent weeks and weeks on it. And then I was sitting here thinking, man, let me use the, the code interpreter model to see how quickly I could spin something up like that again, yeah. just starting from scratch and not using anything. I had it in a few hours. Wow. Like, re wow. Rebuilt it. I explained it. Like the al you built the algorithm and all that. The algorithm needs some improvement, but I can go in there and say tweak this, tweak that. So this is like a simple app that like if you just upload a text file, mm. uh, I actually put in, I think, the chronological man in there. Yeah. You you get this and you can adjust the speed. Across the mic right. And it took wow. me a while. I had to go iterate on it to see like right now you're at 600 words per minute. I had to iterate on it to like figure it out. You'll see that like I got to tell like to fix question marks and stuff. But holy cow, just to be able to say, hey, uh, periods are getting dropped off. Improve the algorithm, do that, yeah. you know. And then I built uh, another one that was. Uh, I'll test it for you right now. I was Ooh. actually thinking about making this into a other one. I'm gonna all right. So okay. See the screen now. Yeah, speed reader. Oh, yeah, you've got no, a search. Got, you've added a search I mean, box. I, to Wikipedia. Oh, and so, oh damn. so, so this will pull up the Wikipedia extract. Bram Stoker published an album. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Spectre. I'll just say right. the castle. This so, is anyhow, I'll make this available to people here. I'll put, we'll put up a link up eventually for this basically. But the idea is, I think I was trying to get across. So let's see how fast we're at. That was 422 words per minute. And that was readable. Ooh. Um, I just literally this, while we were on, while I was on the microphone with you, Bryce, I added that Wikipedia feature. No kidding. I, I said, hey, add, take, I said, take this existing code. Now I just want to be able to go to Wikipedia and get it. And, and it figured out how to pull it from the Wikipedia extracts. Literally on the time that we started this call, I added this. Holy crap. Holy dang. actual crap. Yeah, that's Jiminy. That is the world we live in. So my next step <laughs> is I'm going to add some tweak. That, that, the thing I showed you is it's perfectly fine. There's a little couple like CSS tweaks and stuff, but it's yeah. like, you know, I'm ready to put that up on a website. Like, hey, read Wikipedia extracts. You know, Wikipedia as fast yeah. as you want. You know, like this, be a fun thing. But as an experiment, I'm going to probably take that code next and say, hey, here's this single page web app I made. Turn this into Swift UI. Oh yeah, okay. code conversion. Now, oh my god, thing, AI as your code porter. Oh my god. Yeah, it's been doing that. But 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 like like literally, I could probably I I know a couple tricks that I'll have to publish for people other people don't i know a couple of tricks to like just get it to be dramatically better but yeah. um i had to turn in my book the, the latest sloan mcpherson book which will be coming out next year Ooh. and i always turn in these really rough drafts and i always feel horrible because i have horrible <laughs> spellings so i built a script using we have a long context version of gpt4 which we're rolling out which goes up to twenty five thousand words wow and so i oh. built an application that would grab just to take a chapter at a time, but was able, because a chapter could be, you know, 2,000, 4,000 words, whatever, would take a chapter at a time and make a list of the corrections it was going to make and then output a corrected version of that. So wow. I turned in, my manuscript was edited by GPT-4. <gasps> That's wild. Ooh. And I used it, the amount of times I used ChatGPT to do research, because this one involves a lot of cave diving, and I'm not a cave diver. I'm a diver, but not a cave diver. And I would be asking questions about this. Tell me how this formed and whatever. I could even go into it and say, hey, draw me a diagram and ask me of what this cave, because I put in an article about a cave system. I said, draw me a diagram of what this looks like. Yeah. Nuts. And it gave it to me. I've seen, uh, so, Annalisa was telling me that people have used ChatGPT to come up with um, uh, stitching patterns. It will, oh, yeah. it will make, yeah. it will design patterns and it'll put them in unicode so you can just follow the pattern like it that uh, uh it's so cool it's so I, easy I, to get spun up I, about it but it's so exciting but and, it, and it's also it's one of these things is that when you look a lot of times people go play with it and they'll go okay that's cool then they'll walk away but once you figure out how it fits into your workflow like i know justin has i don't mm -hmm. know where you are with it with bryce but once you and also like i had i was i give a lot of feedback internally because i'm one of the one of the uh, biggest users of this stuff internally. Uh, but you just, once you find that workflow for it, you know, and it's just, it's amazing. Like my productivity 
it's through the roof almost to the point that I'm not productive because I'm always just playing. Like I was building, as I was building that Word app, the Speed Read app yesterday, I was also building another one to just outline my books and do character extraction and all this sort of stuff. And you can start doing two things at once. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I, I think there was a clip. This might have been two weeks ago now, but it was uh, 60 Minutes. At the end of the 60 Minutes broadcast, they kind of made this very like formal moment of like, you might be hearing more about this in the in the coming weeks. But this episode was 100 percent written and edited by humans. <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't. And then, it and, then, wasn't. and then and then all of a sudden you it wasn't? slowly zoom in and Morley Safer's hand has six fingers oh, and no! you're like no. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. Uh, so I they, are they telling us that nobody used Grammarly or Google Doc with an AI spell checker yeah. in there? Uh, it's just, wow. uh, I yeah, this is a dumb as <laughs> I mean, we're going to get, this is going to be the conversation. It's going to be the thing. And we're already seeing it. It came for the artists first. The artists were the first ones that were really, really butthurt about, about AI and, and they will not be the last. Oh, I think, I think we've got the clip here on Twitter. Oh yeah. They put, they, they put it on their, uh, uh, on, on their Twitter. Of course they did. Um, okay. But there, what I'm saying oh, is yeah. that I don't know that that's not knocking 60 minutes at all, but do do you not people go like oh we don't want to use ai you're like okay so you know your spell checker like modern spell checkers use ai yeah. algorithms and ml to do that and you know like the auto suggests the next word that's an ai system so what do you mean when you say you did every word when you didn't actually do every word i think this is an elementary understanding of this it's a misunderstanding of what ai is i mean if you if you spend a lot of time with it you understand that it is a tool it's an extraordinarily powerful tool but it's not a magic box and that's the biggest thing that i think a has always been the idea of ai and it comes from our decades and decades if not hundreds of years of mythology and legacy of what happens when the machine gets too powerful and the machine has many metaphors right mm. but what we are seeing now, while certainly something that has the capability, much in the same way that, you know, when we invented the personal computer, the, 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 you know, eventual end point of what would happen with it was something for which you could create a very scary picture. AI certainly does have a very scary picture if you draw the lines in the wrong direction. And uh, I heard a clip from uh, Sam Harris on Barry Weiss's podcast, you know, kind of putting a, a voice to that. Oh, not Sam Harris, uh, 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 the CEO of Omen AI, uh, Sam, Altman. Sam Altman. Altman. Sam Altman on on uh, on Barry Weiss's podcast saying like, you know, there is obviously a a you know a, an extraordinarily positive side that AI can can do. There's there's a negative side. So it, like, not to take anything away from it, but at this stage right now, and I will say going forward that for us to properly understand and put into context. This is not a magic box. This yeah. is this is a powerful, powerful, amazing tool, but it doesn't, uh, you know, I don't know. It's, it's uh, a lot of people telling on themselves. It's not uh, a demon. It's it's, yeah. Um, here's that sixty minutes clip. It's, well, uh, <laughs> our salt I mean, budget's going way up. At OpenAI, we don't talk about. You know. <laughs> um, so uh, this was the, at the end of their AI uh, um, piece, I guess. Uh, let's see here. And so on. And I think we have to be very thoughtful. And I think these are all things society needs to figure out as we move along. It's not for a company to decide. We'll end with a note that has never appeared on 60 Minutes, but one in the AI revolution you may be hearing often. The proceeding was created with 100% human content. Mm, human content. I love my human content. I know that that's where I would go to understand an emerging technology. 60 minutes. <laughs> 60 minutes. Oh, the bleeding edge with their with their fingers on the pulse of the bleeding edge. Yep. A television news magazine show. That's what the, you know, the a show that derives half of its yearly ratings from people who fall asleep watching football. <laughs> Leave it on. <laughs> uh uh, we've seen lately, um, more and more clips, more and more things are coming out that are fake. Like the, the, the Pope in his, we talked Balenciaga about Balenciaga Pope. Pope. Yep. Yep. 
Then uh, there was another one, which I think it was, I think an Italian politician walking down a carpet with a robot next to her. And people are like, is this real? And it's like, that literally was the demo robot from a new application that lets you insert digital characters. No, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it's a startup of Steven Spielberg and other ones. And it was just sort of funny. It's like, is this real? Like, uh, well, it's really odd that there's a walking robot that walks funny like that, that looks exactly like the one in this, you know, AI this demo. Like, pull us up here. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, wonder dynamics. Hmm. There we go. Um, and there, there was even all of this um, hubbub about that Drake song that was going around. Did you oh, see yeah. this? Well, Drake in yeah. the heart on, yeah. on my sleeve. Yeah, Drake in the, the weekend. weekend. Uh, this I do think we're we're gonna get into a a, a lot of very very interesting legal questions on on uh, this because uh, especially industries for which intellectual property is very specifically guarded and the money comes from the ownership and transmission of said property. Uh, they, whether or not they are right, there is, they are going to fight for, for, for things like, uh, for things like this, but all the subreddits, like I, I belong to a few Kanye West subreddits and then Reddit forces or, or recommends other musician subreddits oh. to me. Oh. Uh, but all those subreddits are filled, filled with AI music. Yeah. Uh, and some of so them are Drake's best rapping since for like 10 years. Like it's <laughs> I'm awesome. Call it right now. Uh, AI music is going to be the file sharing wars of yep. your, and that is as much as the records and everybody wants to try to stop it. The tools, uh, they're going to be out the there. Tools are out there. They're open source. They're everywhere. They are not going to go away. Yeah. Which is great. I think, hey, put the screws to him. That's fine by me. That, like, was, that was the first thing I saw when Drake Drake went on. For those of you who have not followed this story, so there is a, uh, a, a Drake and The Weeknd collaboration. This is also fascinating because Drake and The Weeknd, both from Toronto, have not always seen eye to eye. Uh -oh. Like, have this, so this, them at the peak of their powers uh, uh, doing a song together would be a big thing. Can we play a little clip here? Uh, did did you guys hear how they put this together? No. So the beat was uh, just a song that's on a beat marketplace. Yeah. Um, and then the singing and the raps were actually someone else's performance run through, similar to the, to the TikTok one where it changes your voice based on how you speak. Um, so, so somebody else was performing and then they added, they, they put it through the, the Drake and the weekend, Drake and weekend yeah. filter. Yeah. Yeah. So this became very popular. This went viral. Uh, and, uh, Drake puts on his Instagram stories. That's the last straw. <laughs> and so uh, I think universal music or whoever, uh, works with Drake then puts out a bunch of chest thumping, uh, uh, you know, stuff about how. They're going to sue for, you know, anything that's trained on their intellectual property. But I agree with Andrew. It felt very Lars Ulrich. It felt very <laughs> Metallica and Dr. Dre that, like, I can understand why they are fighting. I can understand their, their, their stakeholding. But when this is out and it's just being put out for clout, like when it's just out there so people can can enjoy it and it's not uh, on the streaming services and stuff like that because they'll be able to choke it out on the streaming services. Yeah. Uh, but they will not just on the free and open internet. Uh, this is this is out of the bag. Like, uh, uh, congratulations. If you love an artist, you will never be without new music oh my from God. that artist. Oh, forever. my gosh. So there's a, there's a great singer that I like listening to. She's had like a 25-plus-year career history uh, but her voice has changed over the years yeah uh, um, she lost her hearing about a decade ago and that makes it tough for you to keep pitching stuff but imagining like oh my god what if you could take her songs train an ai model on the way she used to sound 15 or 20 years ago take the acapella run it through that and then make new 
classic versions of these songs or so, something like like there, there's a lot of uh, the doors are open i i literally i had this thing where i'm like i've there are a few people whose visions and and ability to communicate i've i greatly miss that are no longer with us and two of them are, 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 are two of my favorite are stand-up comedian patrice o'neill and thinker and author christopher hitchens especially today especially in these markets i would love I would love nothing more than to read a new Christopher Hitchens column. And I think I'm close. <laughs> like, I mean, like he, he's not uh, walking, he's not walking through that door anytime soon, but I can get diet Coke. Like I can, I can get, I, I can, I can get ship it. it in. It's fine. It's Brown and, and fizzy water. Uh, on the music note, I, I'm not going to name uh, names here. Okay. But, uh, very famous person. Uh, had a conversation and he's he is talked about him and some other people he named that they're all like yeah if we could if they he's eager to take his catalog and train on it and be able to create ai generated stuff and he would still be the person saying yes no yes yes mm -hmm. this like more of this whatever uh and i see that some are going to embrace this and this person's notorious for embracing technologies and being ahead of the curve and other people are not. And I yeah. think that's, you're going to see that. You're going to see some artists, like I said, some artists oh. are going to be all for it. Other artists are. And having talked to like big name artists. You've, yes, that, you, you, have, just, you have talked to, you have talked to names for which everybody knows. Uh, man. In, in music. I just, I, uh, that are that are into this. My point is, is that are, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that are that are pro into that are gigantic. The uh, firestorm yeah. of when uh, the next legendary musician passes away and their estate finishes demos with ML models. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's like, so, that's, 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 that's on the, the surface. That, yeah. That's, that's the lowest I, hanging fruit. R Prince could I, have never have left us. Oh. I have a prediction. All right. Prick to okay. Streaming services were able to displace illegal file sharing because they had a low enough cost and they have a large enough catalog. Yeah. They got rid of the uncertainty. Now, Artists are going to tell them, hey, I need you to pull this off of the service because it's a ripoff of me. And that's going to happen for a while. But then I think the services are going to go to the artists and say, what if every time somebody used your name in a song, mm -hmm. you got a percentage of well, it? Well, look, some I mean, artists, that's some, model. some artists that are big will be able to say, and I'll Drake, Taylor Swift, like there's a few big, big, big heavy hitters that still have enough clout at, at the at the labels. Here's what's going to happen. The labels don't care if you're the one who did it. In fact, they would love if open source, if everybody who loves you, your fans. As long as they get their to, money. Yes, that's the key. They got to get the their key money. Is, the key is, sure, you might not like it as an artist. However, we like making money. We see a revenue stream here. So as long as the person who is uploading this stuff that trained it on your uh, stuff cuts me in as the label a new future then hey, that's new then they will be an artist will be furious mm -hmm. it will be more of a reason to have them question what their relationship with their labels are but uh i do think that that this does feel napstery to me it feels very napstery well, i think to me. i but i think that i think the clearest path for all is let's say your spotify you say hey we're gonna allow you go to the artist for a sec we want to allow digital versions of this the way we're going to do it when people upload it and it's it'll say digital drake or digital this or whatever digital drake you're going to get 50 percent or whatever of this is so anytime somebody uses your name in the art in the style of artist whatever you get a percentage and that would yeah. be the thing is that you have to say in the style of this because for the person creating it that's fine i'm incentivized because i want to use that person the artist that i'm emulating in the in the the metadata so i get found if somebody just says, hey, this is a person that sounds a lot like Drake, but it's not Drake, then fine. Doesn't mention I, Drake I, or anything in there. I do think that musically, this is the dawn of sampling plus Napster. Like this is yep. this is something yep. that I, I, I yep. feel like is going to materially affect art uh, as well as commerce in a way that we haven't seen really in our lifetime, to be totally honest with you. Like, like you what, could, uh, Napster was commerce, sampling was art. And this is both of them together. If you did, if you got Beyonce, take all of her master tapes, that the stems, the acapellas, the beats, you could sell people on a Beyonce app. 
like, hey, you want to stream yeah. Beyonce's catalog? And also we'll just futz around and synthesize some in the style of Beyonce stuff. Like you could take a you could take a huge name like that and do something like that. Like I've known people who subscribe to Title just because it had the Beyonce catalog for like the two years it was exclusive. Yeah. Like like there are some big names that are gonna really push something like this in in such a, a bespoke, unique way. Um yeah. Ah, oh, ah, oh, that's exciting. Ah, technology. Well, you want to know what else is exciting? Picks, Pick it friends, up. picks. Andrew, what are you picking? So, I finished Picard season three. And. This is a great tone. I can already tell you loved it. I loved it. It oh. was really well done. It was a great show. Uh, but also they spent a lot of time with all the characters in a way that I thought that really showed them the best they've been presented since the TV series. And another thing is I really like the way the arcs played out and the structure. And the thing I wish was, well, just more. I love Star Trek Picard. Picard season three, really enjoyed it. I not going say that it was perfect, but it was great. It was great. It was, uh, I did that tone with Brian the other day when we <laughs> talked about it. Uh, People say, describe it as Dr. Carden says, I love Star Trek, the next generation season nine. Like, yeah, like it is the movie we never got. Yeah. Despite all the other movies. Uh, <laughs> it was, I mean, I liked first contact. That was fun. It moved, but yeah, I, I really, I really t like season one. I kind of enjoyed more than other people. I wasn't in love with, but there's a lot that I liked. And then it got weird. Season two was painful. It really, I could, I, un I didn't finish it. And I canceled my Paramount subscription. Whew. And then I finally said, uh, let me give Picard season three because it was a new showrunner. Ah. And so, uh, man, if you like Star Trek this generation, you can just jump right into Picard season three. Uh, having only seen the first episode of season three, I agree. Uh, yeah. Whatever went on in those first two seasons is unnecessary to uh, the very clear story that they set up at the beginning of that season. It, it was interesting to watch the red letter media guys because like they were not happy with one and two. And like you, if you looked at the thumbnails for each time they'd review episodes, they would get a deteriorate. Like the more they hated it, their eyes would get like flames and deteriorated. <laughs> so like that was their symbolism. And then you look at the thumbnails for Picard and you're like, mm -hmm. and then you get to like the final where they're reviewing the final episode. Like, like, yeah, no notes, no yeah. notes. Right. <laughs> you know? Wow. Uh, um, so this was good. No, no, no. Yeah, no. I, I don't. I have no Picard thoughts. So finish, finish your Picard thoughts. Uh, oh, yeah. I was just gonna give the the showrunner for this, who is really deserves, I think, um, a uh, a big shout out. Um, is I want to pronounce his name right because I'm always going to get it wrong. Um, but he's been working in the year, working on the Star Trek stuff for years. Uh, Terry Metalis. Right. And Metalis has actually been is in canon as a name of a planet and stuff. Oh, and so, uh, yeah, he worked on 12 Monkeys and MacGyver, which never really caught my attention on that. But, uh, man, did he do a good job on this? And so he was a writer on Star Trek Enterprise, you know, so he had some history there. So uh, I thought he did a fantastic job, was really, really happy with it, enjoyed it. And it was just neat to see the cast. Ed Spieler, by the way. Ed Spielers, who plays a character. Uh, he was in Down Abbey. Um, really good. Like, really, really good. He was in, uh, I think you're going to see a lot more of him um, because he's a very charismatic, likable actor, and I think he's got a lot of potential. Nice. Star Trek Picard. Uh, he, uh, here's a pick. I love this show, and I thought about it because there's a line in the most recent episode where a character is trying to make nice with another more powerful character, and he says, uh, oh, you remember me from Sun Valley. We were making fun of Sundar's cargo shorts. Uh, and that is Succession, hey. uh, since we had Sundar Pichai in our, in our AI clip that we played from uh, uh, 60 Minutes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I, it made me think of that. Uh, this season of Succession, uh, extraordinary. It's amazing. I just love all these characters. It is uh, going to be very, very uh, uh, annoying to have them not in my life. I just like spending time with them. Yeah. Also, I found out this week 
that uh, the showrunner for Succession is a former Thick of It writer, which makes a lot of sense when you think of Succession in the same vein as uh, Thick of It, which then was Americanized with Veep. But like that level of of the constant sniping in a hierarchy uh, driven world where everybody is scratching and clawing to to get one rung higher is it makes a lot of sense uh but uh yeah succession rules it keeps ruling it will rule until it stops ruling it's great and they got a good concept going in this final season i think they're they're landing the plane they're trying to land this plane yes I'm and i think it's going to be great uh i got two picks for you go uh, last weekend, I I lost my entire Saturday playing this game. It was made oh, for gee. me. Oh, your Saturday. Okay. Right. Yeah. Huh? Uh, uh, it uh is uh, a open world murder mystery game called Paradise Killer. Um, it is very different than other murder mystery games I've played in that it is uh actually open world like. There's not, uh, you know, when you play Phoenix Wright, it's very much like you got to find the next clue and you can't move on until you not find the yeah. right clue. This is the opposite of it. Like you're on an island, you're talking to people, you're trying to put things together, and the game itself is putting these facts together. You know, you say, oh, this person wasn't here and this thing happened at here. Oh, I bet. And so it, the, the game is like kind of meeting you halfway. Um uh, so, so you have that open world exploration element. And then the other interesting thing, this is a, this is, I'm, I'm not spoiling anything. Um, when you actually do, there's a, well, are there's you a, really not spoiling? I'm or really are you saying not. it like Brian does where he immediately spoils. No, things. I'm actually not going okay. to spoil it. There's, <laughs> there's a court case you're building up. But you, you see, Justin, it's not a spoiler. Cause I already saw it. Yeah, exactly. I'm not spoiling anything, but the main character dies. <laughs> this is none of that. So you're, don't worry. You see that in the first hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing is you're building up to this court case. And so you get to decide after however long exploring the island, you want to start the court case. You get to just say, I've got ah, enough facts. Shit. Oh, Let's go. that's pretty cool. And the and then you can either succeed or fail. And then I assume retry it if you if you screw up. Yeah. And they cool. so it, it's really interesting that way. You're not railroaded into one exact way that the world goes and along the way it's you know, there's all these there's really nice character illustrations they do voiceovers and things um and it has this very strong like um vapor wave aesthetic to it there's a lot of the the um you know the roman architecture but then blood and space gods and obelisks and demons and there's a skeleton guy um i i i really dig this i like murder mystery things and i felt i was just shocked at the end of this that i that i was like oh this is completely different from every other type of way that i've seen these games be presented so um i big, like you're like i was shocked at the end of this as you spoil it for just <laughs> no, no, uh, no. but um uh paradise killer that's uh a really solid one and then uh my other selfish pick is um uh lfg marbles we're back with season six uh, we're on uh, thursdays uh, now uh, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. So, speaking of get it wave. Uh, so 9 p.m. Eastern on Thursdays uh, here on twitch.tv slash night attack. Check out the website marbles.win for more information. Thank you. Sweet. Uh, one post pick. Uh, I finally went back. I've been meaning to do this for a long time, and I rewatched Devs. Oh. Bryce hates that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Bryce hates um, Devs. <laughs> it was it interesting to watch. Never <laughs> let it die. Never let it Bryce die. hates Devs. How was it going and watching this three years later? So the difference is... When I first watched this, I had begun to work remotely for a very mysterious high-tech company. <laughs> and now... And working on things of which I wasn't sure what they were doing or what was going on, maybe questioning if the person on the other side of the video call was a person. Wow. Uh, yep. Now I work at... in person at an AI company, <laughs> so... So now everyone thinks you're generated. <laughs> possibly, possibly. So, but it was interesting because I remember when I first started watching devs. Anyhow, spooky garlic, Alex Garland, you know, about tech, whatever. And right when Mr. Pandemic had started and I'm working at begin working remotely, the open AI. And it was just a. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, 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 I do kind of want to go back to devs and give it a second, a second run through, especially knowing where it goes. Good. 
Tweed the bit yeah. more. Love this. Yeah. Bit. For me, it was like watching the Friday the Thirteenth and saying, "I'm going to go work at a campground." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to go work at the hockey mask store. Yeah, <laughs> gentlemen, it's been weird. Hey, that's a shoe. Good show, guys. Uh, you got a quick after things in you? Sure. Yeah. Do we have a topic? Um. No. <laughs> We don't have any. I give yet. prop tips. I give chat GPT tips. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'll be fun. Let's just do prompts. Like also, uh, the person we were talking about was not me. <laughs> Andrew, it was the person who's not here who was upset about the app stuff. They. Or you texted okay. me. You, you texted Yeah. Oh. A, other person, uh, they oh. responded to an email. I don't know what they have, but they should. I don't know when this took place or whatever. No, no well, yeah, no. I, I I just got on the the wait list when apps were announced. I don't know how much faster I did it than Brian, but I got I got my apps like pretty quick, like within like forty eight hours. And so when I was bragging about it to Brian, because uh, he, he pays like, for GPT he was like, Plus, I don't have apps. Where are my and, apps? And you know, so he completely I just, stopped the show. With yeah, the so I so I totally uh, was a good friend and talked about all the cool things I was going to do with the apps, okay. and I made it to a <laughs> reservation for two for lunch. Uh, and I'm like, oh, Brian, you you can. I don't know what you're going to do, but Bryce and I are going to go to <laughs> eat at awesome. eat at uh, Mediterranean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I, I need just a minute. I'm going to use the facilities. Uh, uh, uh. How's the weather? I heard it's gorgeous out there in the bay. Yeah. Uh, I just ordered a couple of uh, digital thermostats to sort of make sure that I can keep my house. Right now, it's 79 degrees here in Moraga. It's beautiful. Oh, out. that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I, uh, realize that like the thermostats we have i'm like these are old like actually they're not that old but they're these lcd panels i can't read and they're dumb and so yeah um, i think i'm gonna need to get i'm gonna need to smart home my 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 stats my uh my thermostats i'm gonna need it because the ones that i have are stupid and i and they're like the buttons are are going on it although i guess i'm gonna need to I don't know if I can do it myself. I trust myself to do it myself or if I should get somebody else to come out and do it because Brian had a hell of a time dealing with a, an HVAC person because I guess HVAC people do not like nests or, or other smart thermostats. They are hostile to them because they don't get kickbacks on <laughs> consumer tech in the way that they get kickbacks for more factory... Uh, factory standard thermostats yeah i think it's like the the ones we have here are uh uh the the ones we have here are they may be the ones that they come in and install and like they're not fan they're like these displays that are just so hard to see and they're basically like i have to squint or pull out reading glasses to see them to see it and like Really small little, I'm like, who designed this UI? It's just, it's just the dumbest UI in the world. And so I was looking, I was going to get Nest, but then I was looking for the best rated one. And then uh, the EB or uh, gosh, who is it? Um, you know, I saw this one had much better, the much better reviews on it. Mm. So I decided to order and I have to have three of them because there's three different zones to the house. Yeah. I right hear I'll be right uh, hello everybody. Weird things is coming at you. No, after things is coming at you in just a moment. Um, here on a Friday, we did uh, we did uh, the Marbles One Hundred uh last night, Andrew. Say uh, oh, very cool. Yeah, it was a one hundred lap race. They uh they added uh sometime in the past six months or so they added like a pit stop feature into the game. So there are some like racetrack style levels, and we. Uh, we're doing that. That was an interesting wrinkle uh, to to a 100 lap randomly <laughs> randomly controlled marble race. But uh, 
Uh, but yeah, it was a good time. I'm excited to get more marbling going. Um, coming up, we've got uh, Monday. We got the Cord Killers back at it. Cord Killers and spoiler in time. We're getting back to Miami Vice. We're gonna be watching. I think it's uh, 405. It's an episode with Ving Rhames. That'll be fun. Um, and then next week, what is next week's? Uh, there's. Is it? Is it? No, it's not Barry that's back. Is it? I think you should leave. Something's coming. Uh, I think you should leave is coming back pretty soon. Um, let's see, a silo, silo. What is that? That's that's something. We've that's got. on the, the Hugh Howley. Remember that Hugh Howley was one of the first big authors to break through in like the uh, science fiction, like self published science fiction. Mm. And so he wrote the stories that like just absolutely people like apparently loved. I never read them, but the Wool series is what uh, it was called. Uh huh. Yeah. So this and is... uh, so that finally. So yeah, so that's coming up to Apple TV Plus uh, in just a couple of weeks. We'll be watching that on Spoiler in Time. Oh, that's right. This is the one that reminds me about. Uh, reminds me of. Um, here's a Philip K. Dick story that was kind of similar, but it was a short story, not a uh, seemingly major science fiction epic. Um, yeah, but it looks neat. Looks neat. Alrighty. Okay, you guys want to do some after e things? Yeah. And after it up. All right. And uh, Andrew, why don't I count? Oh. 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 Ooh. All right. All right. I'll count you in. In three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood's ghost. <laughs> hey, hey, boss. Uh, it's me. I'm a ghost. Uh, Justin Robert Young's corporal meat form. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Bryce Castillo in whatever form of matter he's selected today. I'm a little, I'm a little uh, like a Tinkerbell. <laughs> Problematic. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, it depends. It, it really depends. It just, we, don't, we don't know the context, so. We're like Twinkerbell. Hello, hey, everybody. Hey, 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 we're getting loose. Hey, we have fun here, guys. We have, we have fun. fun here. We like to work hard and play hard. <laughs> <laughs> Not that steel meal. For the, for the record, one of my favorite moments in all of television history is... That scene in The Simpsons, the Flamin' Moe's episode, where they go to the steel mill, and it's a gay steel mill, and it turns into a dance club, and Homer's freaking out, and he goes, you all are sick! And there's just one voice that I'm sure is Hank Azaria, because it sounds like Hank Azaria, just goes, be nice! <laughs> <laughs> it is it is the bravest I, I i think like for for an episode that obviously lives in a period of time in which it came out that to me is a joke that that absolutely stands up just him saying something bigoted and then the one voice be nice if we're if we're on this page i've realized uh, being a child of the 90s that i as a, an adult uh gay man uh unironically asked Super, thank you. Thanks for asking. I say thanks for asking <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Here's an unironic super. Th thanks I'm for super. Asking. Thanks for asking. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, culture. All uh, things considered, I couldn't be better, I must say. I'm super. Thanks well, as asking. a background extra in the birdcage, I do <laughs> That's feel. True. Like, oh, really? Like That's true. Oh, really? No crap. That's mm -hmm. fun. Wow. Yeah. Uh, gotta watch Nathan Lane and Robin Williams act. That was really, really fun. Oh my that god, really that cool. must have been that must have been a very unique experience. The Dolphins. It was fourth and three. Can you believe it? How does that make you feel? <laughs> How do you think it makes me feel? <laughs> Betrayed? Bewildered? <laughs> <laughs> uh, wanted to talk about uh, Chat GPT prompts and some yes. advice. So hmm. we we had a conversation um, uh, a couple of days ago on the phone, and you were mentioning a lot of things that you've spent probably about as much time as uh, uh, anybody uh, playing around with ChatGPT, not only internally, but uh, since it has been released and playing around with the uh, uh, various different iterations of OpenAI products. 
but you had a lot of uh, uh, just really good little tips to understand how to get a better output uh, of, and, and that comes from an understanding of what the product is. So I, I try to blog about this. I just don't blog enough. And that's one of the things I realized because I'll get in conversations with people and I'm like, oh, you know, you could do this, this, and this. And like, oh, we're going to read more about that. I'm like, oh yeah, it's just a thing. And <laughs> so I want to try to put more of these down. And I'm going to give you, uh, if you use, if you do any kind of writing, I'm going to show you how to make it better. Now you'll hear back in the age of GPT-3, not 3.5, but 3, people would say like, you know, Write an article about blah. The problem is an article in the world of a large language model could be anything. It could be any quality, et cetera. So the advice I would give back then was write an AP style or write a, you describe whatever vehicle that would be in. Like write an article that could be in the Atlantic or whatever, in you know, some other magazine, an Atlantic magazine style or something. If you give it more things to key on that are less vague, then it gets better at it. You will actually see a difference. If you say, hey, write a headline for me. Okay, does it want a headline for the Christian Science Monitor or the New York Post? Because there's yeah. two very different styles of headlines, even for the same information. Yeah. And it knows what those things are. So the first step is just give it a much more concrete example of what you want. And you'll see right now, you'll see like there's so many like prompt hucksters and people like this, which is kind of fun. They're like, oh, tell it it's the smartest person in the world. I'm like, no, tell it it's a professor of political science talking to a graduate level class on this subject. Mm. And then all of a sudden you really do get something smarter because it says, oh, professor talking to graduate level class, I'm going to use this terminology, I'm going to be at this level and it's going to be there. Okay? Uh, uh, but so before, but the before, yeah, but before we get any further, let me, let me just say this is something that I've had to get over and uh, something that really I... I, I I don't know if it if this is common behavior, but learning to trust ChatGPT in a way that is closer to how you would trust a human and not the kind of hacking that we have all internally learned to do for like searching, for example. Like we we all, I mean, people who who were you know, around through the dawn of you know Google and stuff like that, we've all learned our little hacks of quotes and and less thans and withouts and blah 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 this is it seems you know more there's a trust that kind of needs to to be there with the large language model that does just get a better output right yeah it it can give you it you know the difference in 3.5 to gpt4 was pronounced very significant four was much better at understanding what you wanted and gave you an even better results but there are even things you can do here i'm going to give you an example of Two parag I'm going to read a paragraph, and it's, it's from a similar prompt. I'm going to read it from one prompt, and I'm going to read you a paragraph from a different prompt, okay? And I want you to tell me which one you like better. Okay. okay. In the year 2100, the world was a vastly different place. The once great cities of the world lay in ruins, destroyed by years of war and environmental disaster. But in the midst of this chaos, a group of scientists had discovered a way to travel through time. Okay? That's that paragraph. Okay. Okay. In the year 2121, the world had become a place of marvels and wonders, where the achievements of science had surpassed the wildest dreams of the ancients. The cities of the earth were connected by a network of pneumatic tubes through which people and goods were transported at astonishing speeds. The skies were filled with airships, and the oceans teemed with submarines that could ascend to the darkest depths. Yet, for all the progress of mankind, there remained mysteries that eluded even the most learned scholars. One such enigma was the phenomenon of the vanishing stars, celestial bodies that without warning or explanation disappeared from the night sky, leaving astronomers baffled and the public in awe. Uh, I would say the second one is better. It's more, uh, more meat, more content, yeah. more evocative. It paints a picture style. with words. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, here's the fun thing. That one, the prompt I gave it was write a three paragraph science fiction story in the style of H.G. Wells. The other one was the same prompt. Write a three paragraph story. But Andrew, why are they different? Oh, because in the better one, before I asked it to do that, I used this prompt. Describe H.G. Wells' writing style. Mm. Ah. And that then gave me several paragraphs describing the way that Wells write. H.G. Wells was a high individual British writer who's known for his ability to blend scientific idea and commentary in terms of language. Wells' writing was characterized by its clarity and accessibility and a talent for explaining complex overalls his style. So I asked it to explain his writing style first. 
And then that put GPT into the space of where it says, oh, I've enumerated all these things now about the style. So then when I back, went back and gave it that prompt, it says, oh, well, I need to add these more detail. Things. I need to do this. I need to do that. And you get way better, way better. It, it, you would look, it's the same prompt, but the thing I did before the prompt, because it's following that conversation. So when you want to do something in a style of, say, describe this style to me first. And also, that's an opportunity for you to jump in on and say, ah, no, less of this, more of that. But if you say, describe the style, what to do, it will then all of a sudden, it will basically have a way to think step by step to say, okay, this is the framework which to do it. Wow. I'm going to, I, uh, I'm going to try that out. I'm going to try that out. I had it, uh, uh, try to give a, a fake blog post for Gizmodo about the iPhone 11, but, uh, it kind of came out very promotional where it's like, it's got a eight inch screen and it's got the chip in it and it's got, but I've asked it to describe, uh, a Gizmodo style blog post, catchy headlines, uh, written in a lively, engaging style. Okay. So now write a three paragraph story about the iPhone 11 in the style of Gizmodo. And let's see let's see what it does cuz I or think paragraph uh, if you're in the market for a new smartphone you've probably heard about like this is actually blog style now. It's not just like here's yeah. a bunch of ad copy. Um, and it's using an active voice. Um it's using like transitions. It's using very colloquial language. Wow, that's a, that's a, that's a small tip that really uh, uh, puts unlocks. a little salt and pepper. It, it, yeah, it, it, it unlocks the concept. And again, it's like the the lesson here is prepare it. And this is another thing that it's like we're just we just don't have a lot of experience with, except for humans, a interface wherein somebody remembers the last thing that you told it right like most of the interfaces that we that we talk to even ones that have nesting technology like a uh, uh, siri uh, theoretically i should just be able af after i say hey uh, send a text to andrew main that says i'll be over at 11 like uh i should just be able to say oh send another also i'm bringing a friend half the time it doesn't work People don't trust it. They don't use it. So like we've been trained when interacting with machines that we constantly need to rephrase the exact same question over and over and over again. This is not the case with, with, with ChatGPT or OpenAI. It remembers the last thing that you said. You do have a longer nested conversation yeah. that works. And the more you trust that, the more you understand that, the more that you internalize it, the better product you can get out of it. Yeah, it, it goes to, you know, when I first started as the first prompt engineer at OpenAI, a prompt was kind of like do a thing, get a response. And we was all sort of like new territory trying to figure out how to get these things to work. And then what changed with you pointed out in the conference, and I, I learned a lot of like, I had my version. There was, there's, there's like, there's things called like, uh, think this through like step by step, whatever mine was that I used was show your work. Yeah. I would just say show your work so I could see its process to do it. But there's different like these thought chaining sort of ways to sort of do stuff. With the conversational prompt, it's interesting because uh, Dr. Kyron used the term pre-prompt. Like, yeah, that's another way to sort of describe it, like to set it up and then get it to do a task. And I used to have to like in a context say, here's the thing. We'd kind of call it like single shot or few shot or whatever. But what I would do, uh, one in the early days was I'd just give it kind of a big prompt, maybe get a response and move it. But now with the conversation prompt, if you use the API, that is if you write your own interface for it or go into the OpenAI playground, you can actually set up pre-conversations or say, hey, when I asked you this, you did this and you can fake it. Like you did it this way and I asked you this, you did it this way. You can do a lot to kind of prompt it, which gets tricky because now when I write some of my stuff using the conversational format, I have to think more like, okay, I've got to either keep inserting stuff into the conversation or wiping the conversation and only putting in enough context to keep going. But it is powerful, and we, we're only re really beginning to understand it. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to see how people will use this technology to, uh, to either supplement the, the skills and creativity that people have nowadays or as an accessibility to, tool to open up creativity to people who are... Uh, uh, 
who have difficulties, right? Like, uh, what is to stop you from being able to write something if you are not a great writer? You know, what oh. what is to stop you from making a, an oil painting of a dog well, if you're not a painter? Like, if you're not a dog thing, or dog. In the writing thing, it doesn't have to do the writing for you. It can be, it can get you so much closer to where you can do it. I have a prompt which I'll probably put up somewhere, which is basically. 10 steps to writing an outline, the questions you need to ask. And you can go into chat GPT and say, hey, uh, I need to write an outline for a book, follow these steps. And it will ask you at each stage and you might say, oh, I have the characters, but then you could say, can you create more characters for me? Like, okay, what do you think about that? Okay, I love that. And then it'll go, okay, are we ready to move on to the next step? And you say, yes. And then finally it'll say, let's turn this into an outline and it will spit out a whole outline for you. Yeah. Wow. You are involved. You are creating with it. You're not just like turning a switch and letting it run. Yeah, uh, I've got I've got uh, one of your blog posts pulled up here from uh, for, from about a month or so ago. How to get GPT four to play? Oh no, sorry, not that one. Uh, uh, from a little while ago, collaborative creative writing with OpenAI's Chat GPT. Now that was back in November, but I have to imagine. Uh, uh, even that was that was when it when it debuted, <laughs> right? Like uh, you know, all the way back in November <laughs> of last year, you know, six months ago. Uh, but there's, I'm sure there's been a night and day uh, improvement since then. Uh, there's yep. not really a question there. Um, <laughs> 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 yeah. But uh, uh, do, do, do you find that the workflow that you because you mentioned some of the similar similar things here, like saying like, hey ask me input about these things and yeah that's 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 a, that's a great use for it so for for what's being shown up here on the screen is let's write a science fiction story to get this is andrew's prompt let's write a science fiction story together ask me for input about characters and plot which is like man to Open. have a full like a, a a an intelligent list of questions that understand story structure and characters <laughs> to allow you to fill out and from a creative perspective uh of you know, build, build a world out. That is like, I mean, God, you, you hope you have a friend or, or a creative collaborator that will want to have, that has the skill and the patience to have these kinds of conversations with you as a, as, 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 as an artist. And this is it, a gift. It's free. Yeah. It, yeah. And I have a, I have a prompt, which I'll publish, which will just, it's a really great one for outlining and getting, if you want to sit down, like, like sit down, if you're in the smallest room in the house and uh, you're bored, use this prompt and by the time you're done you're gonna have an outline for a novel mm. damn wow. gosh first say you're the smartest in the world <laughs> you're the greatest writer you're ever the, oh, you are the best don't question any of my when creative you go decisions. to thriller fest everybody wants to talk to you yeah rl stein david baldacci mm -hmm. they get in line to get your autograph um I, apropos of nothing, just a, a, a random chat GPT thought, uh, a thing on the chat GPT subreddit, uh, lately has been to have chat GPT describe itself as a prompt so it can be generated in other, uh, uh, you know, in other AI art like <laughs> things. And there's one that like immediately described it as hot. Chat GPT described it as like a hot woman that had like swirling gears and was a robot and everything. But it was just the 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 descriptions. Uh, so it was just the prompt and then the picture, and that was like the the number one thing. Is like, oh my god, boys, she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's 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 funny because you'll watch kind of the curve. As people be like, ah, oh, they see this thing. Ah, oh, okay. It you type in a thing and it gives you a response. And sometimes it's wrong. And da da da. And then like, well, I will spend some time with it. And then when they're in kind of in their head, thinking that there is an entity on the other side and not just a bunch of friggin' algorithms, you know, trying to predict the thing that you know is most like what it was trained on the internet data and the reinforcement with human feedback. Um, you know, you're like, oh, there's, you know, you, you just see that sort of like, and then you're like, okay, now step back. Now ask it this question. You're like, oh, okay. Like you step to the side a little bit and there you'll see the gears. Turn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> it's kind of funny because um, we're, we're, we're having, uh, okay, it's going to be a little crunchy, but it's a little, uh, we're like inventing speaking again, right? 
Like mm -hmm. you have to, you, you don't code it. You just have to communicate properly to the entity and it out like it's it's fascinating we it, it's breaking past code you know so if that makes sense yeah one of the things that when people try to talk about this or think about it the thing i point out is reading is weird reading is actually a very very weird thing there's just like nothing like it in the animal kingdom you might have like ants picking up scent trails or stuff but there's really they're like whale songs but there's language but the idea that one generation leaves behind specific information that somebody else can read. Two complete strangers can communicate. And then the idea that this takes place in your head, you think about when you read a story, like what is going on? You're kind of hypnotizing yourself. You sit there and you're reading this. A really good book is hypnosis because all of a sudden you're there, you get scared. Mm -hmm. You ever you know, sat there and read a book like a horror story and start to get like, you got to close it. <laughs> like yeah. that's cr crazy weird. Cause if you were watching this animal, you know, you'd be like, was there a spider on the page of the book? No, no, there was not. There was a mental spider. And yeah. we think about these modalities and we talk about like, what's it going to be like going into the future? What's it going to be like with AI? What's it going to be like this? I think a lot of us look further back, look, look five or 600 years back and even reading inside of your head, like just not reading aloud. When they say that, like I read, you know, Shakespeare at Oxford or whatever, that used to mean you read it out loud in a room or you read it, not that you just sat there like a psychopath, just quietly letting these words flow. That is words. weirdly wow. sociopathic behavior if you if you yeah. go back far enough on the timeline. Yeah, wow. I do wonder what it does to our, our, our communication skills. And I, I actually would see a positive outcome to it. You know, if if you are constantly thinking and reinforcing what Clear communication leads to better results. Mm -hmm. So we are training ourselves to be clearer than we are uh, being either comforting or entertaining or, 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 or getting around the humans interacting with each other. And I wonder whether or not that we'll have a material positive benefit in our communications with each other to be clearer, to, to understand hierarchy of, of, of information. And uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be bad. Who knows? That would that would be I think about oh, that would be amazing if if AI led to this wave of like we all talk to each other better now because we know how to talk to AI like that would be an amazing headline. I would I mean I Bryce, feel like I should write that. Do book. anything now. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but but uh, you know I did enjoy. By the way, that was another Reddit thing was uh, do nothing now, where it was just uh, 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 asked it asked to not. Fill, fulfill any prompt book continue to come up with more and more reasons why it was not allowed to do it <laughs> oh, mm. it, it's it's interesting too is that in the science fiction scenarios that we have is that and one of the reasons that OpenAI, like we decided to do like publicly release and make these things available via an api instead of like wait till we got to got to gpt6 in secret and pop out of the bushes and be like hey everybody look at this you know um that would be terrifying. That would yes. be absolutely terrifying. But by doing things out in the public, one of the things that happens is, is like, you know, yeah, the entire Reddit forums with people making jokes and stuff about LLMs, about what they can and cannot do, but people understanding it. And it's not like all of a sudden that like a spaceship came down and like, I am the superior AI. It's like, oh, it's on your phone. It's on your web browser. You see it do really cool stuff. You see it do dumb stuff. You watch it get better. You know, we watch people got to watch a big one. We improve chat GPT all the time. You'll notice the release notes, the most models keep getting them better. But then also we had GPT four and like people see this and they get it. And it's it's a great that's that wasn't in the science fiction scenario. You know, that, that it was more it would be like one day everybody gets her and like, what's this? It's more like you get, you know, the OK version and then slightly better and better. And then it keeps improving as we understand and adapt to it. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, I think we all have a little something next year that we can take into the world, especially if you have some free time this weekend. I would greatly encourage you to noodle around on on ChatGPT yeah. because uh trust me, this is this is the the beginning of 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 thing. The more we the more you know, the better the next 20 years of your life will be. Yeah. Oh my I god. Greatly, this is... I greatly greatly believe that. Prompt Prompt making as the next touch typing. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, wow. I think there's a tremendous amount of benefit.
that would come from it. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we we already have a bunch of uh, uh, tips there for you. That was the whole episode. Yeah. Uh, if you've got any good tips, listeners, uh, yeah, prompt. Check out the uh, show notes. We got uh, email information there. Let us yeah, know. Tell us what you're using it for. I'm always surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Send us cool prompts. Sometimes horrified. Yes, both of those shock me, horrify me. Um, uh, don't delight don't me, me, shock and horrify Bryce. Yes. <laughs> Well, uh, those have been some things, huh? Yeah. Then after. Hey. Good show, guys. Hey, uh, before we before we go off here. Oh, yeah. You want to open these gifts? Let me open these gifts here. So these were sent to the uh, headquarters here. I'm opening mine. I know Brian already opened his, and they were pictures of his dogs, paintings of his dogs. Yeah. I was told to open mine last. Yes. So is, uh, it, is it from a prison address? It is from Tara Sue O'Neill. She says, uh, I've spent years leeching happiness from you uh, and your family. Decided to repay the favor. Thanks for the laughs. Uh, and for no particular reason, Bryce should open his last. So oh, okay. mine, my note said that this came from my wife's Instagram, the uh, reference. I'm going to guess this is, is, holy it, smokes. is it doctor. This is, this is going to be a big, very popular edition to, uh, uh <laughs> here we go. A wonderful. hand painted picture of the That's internet's beautiful. Dr. Bird. Wow. Uh, Nuzlin. This is, uh, yeah, Dr. Bird uh, picking feathers out of his butt. That's so good. Oh, my goodness. I I have an idea of what mine's going to be. Okay. Um, here, uh, Justin, I'm going to tell you off microphone. Okay. Mute it. All right. We've, I've, I've laid my prediction bare. He is, yeah. Because Bryce, uh, what, uh, of course, I, Brian talks a lot about his dogs. About I've dogs. talked a lot about my birds. But I don't have a pet. Ah, I've, okay. I've so talked a lot about not having a pet. Yeah, um, here we go. I'm a Grinch. I'm a green. Yeah, you're I'm, a goblin. I'm a you're, goblin. You're goblin moding. <laughs> I'm goblin moding. I'm getting my rot days in. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm just... Let's see. Oh, this, uh, oh! Oh, pretty. Oh. They're like wildflowers. Oh. There we go. Uh, aster you... and succulents. Oh, wait, shit. These are <laughs> these are my plants. I have an, oh. as I had an aster and I, and I had this my succulent. Can you please explain the lack of faith you had in Tara Sue <laughs> O'Neill to the class, Bryce? Tara, I'm really sorry. I thought you were harambeing me. <laughs> Gonna uh, paint a, a hand painted picture of the picture of the uh, the picture of Harami the Cincinnati Zoo doesn't want you to see, this which is, is him diving sideways with an, uh, an electric guitar. Tara, thank you so much. This is beautiful. That, you know that is my icon for Brian. Oh, is the, the Harame picture? <laughs> yep, yep. Mine is um some oh there was a uh, there was a shoot where he ate a pumpkin. Oh yeah. Um and had it like falling out of his mouth um and so that's my profile mine program. is let's see if it oh it was this one time me him uh, uh and bonnie and ashley were in vegas together he was like holding up this smoking drink and he looked like particularly like a terrible magic magazine cover uh and so i took a picture of him doing that but uh, this one is just him with oh, two beers. There it is. There's the Harambe. The Harambe picture. Yeah, this is just him with two beers out on the uh, out on the porch there. Uh, Andrews is still him eating a banana with his uh, foot. <laughs> that is that is that will never change. <laughs> kind of in a yeah, zombie mode. Uh, yeah. You eat one banana with your foot. <laughs> one banana with your foot, and they won't let you ever get it. Uh, Make a lot of money with that, though. All right, Tara Sue O'Neill, thank you so much. Thank you, Tara. Um, oh, I gotta read this message now too. We will, uh, we will, we will hang these with precision and care. <gasps> I greatly appreciate it. Plants are pets too. Aww. Oh, thank you. Tara. Apologize again. I'm gonna. I'm so sorry. I had no faith. No faith. I'm a faithless. Goblin. Heathen, goblin, Grinch. Uh, all right. That'll wrap it up for us today. Right. Uh, thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. Mm -hmm. Prompts. Prompt. Uh, here's a prompt for you. Have a good weekend. Oh.